Looks like it's a NyQuil night for me. <laughs> I have a surprise for all the slackers, but nothing better to do than play games and surf the net all day. Gamecom! So what we're going to see tonight is the Tiger Gamecom. Yep, back in 1997, Tiger, the people who made those little LCD handhelds that were pretty much unplayable ports of NES games and stuff like that, they made their own portable gaming console. It has a touch screen, thus mm -hmm. the stylus down there. It has four action buttons, a uh, few option buttons, and it has a modem connection port on the side so you can check your email. Yeah. It requires an internet connection, though, so you have to check it at home. You can't check it portably. <laughs> This was around the time the Game Boy was still popular. The Game Gear was kind of petering out by this point. The Lynx had long been dead. So Tiger took the Nintendo approach. Monochrome graphics. Really simple gameplay. Just mm -hmm. taking it back to basics. Pretty much just emulating the Game Boy step for step as best they could. Oh boy. The execution could not have been worse though. Tonight's stream only exists because of Bad Game Hall of Fame curator Cass. Thank you very much for your assistance. Yes, thank you. Yes, they've uh, provided us with uh, a rundown of every single game available for this thing, along with detailed instructions about how to run the only existing emulator for this thing. You want to know how old this <laughs> emulator is? Love this this. emulator is literally more than 20 years old. The last version was released at the end of 1998, as you can see there. Uh, it's compatible with Windows 95, Windows 98, and maybe Windows NT if we're lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Windows 2000, XP, 7, 8, 10, who even knows? Uh, through some miracle, this somehow works perfectly on a Windows 10 machine. Don't ask me how. Or yeah! Why. Yeah, how? How? I really want to know the story behind this, because apparently a group of people just hacked together a GameCom emulator in 1998, and they got it mostly working, and then they finally played the games, and they were like, ooh, let's stop working on this. And that's what happened. <laughs> now, since then... Uh, Premature support has been added to Mess and MAME uh, via some open source kind of business. Mm -hmm. You know them open source people. But from the, the video footage I've seen, it's actually less accurate than the 20-year-old emulator. <laughs> Should we get started? Oh, man. So just to walk you through the process of me doing this, you can't see this because it's not on stream, but I'm loading up a disassembler window. Mm -hmm. I'm clicking File, Load Bin File. Let's go with Batman and Robin dot bin. I have to pick an input address, which is like a, an offset or something like that. It defaults to zero, so that's nice. I'm clicking file, load kernel. Uh, you know what? Let's do the full kernel because that actually has the full Gamecom introduction when you actually see uh, when you turn on the console. Ooh. So I loaded that up. And then when I click run, everything should work absolutely perfectly. You ready for this? Yes. Okay, good start. Ah, oh, crap. I need to turn down the audio. Gamecom active. <laughs> Actually, you know what? It was worth it to have it that loud for that part. Yep, that's what you hear when you turn on a Gamecom. You hear a clunk and then it says Gamecom active. It doesn't do it as horrifically slow as this emulator does it, and that's the problem with this emulator. As far as I can tell, the video emulation is close to 100% accurate. The sound emulation, the music works fine. The digitized effects all play at extremely slow and terrifying volume. So enjoy that whenever that happens. Now this main menu here is actually touchscreen based. So I'm gonna go ahead and click through here. Jeez. Let's look at our phone book. Yeah. So in addition to being a games console, this thing advertised it as, itself as like a personal digital assistant of sorts. It had this very, uh, the touch screen was divided up into squares, see? They were very large squares, and they pretty much mapped to what you see on the screen right now. Uh. Yeah, let's do this one. Okay, who's, who, who are you talking to? I'm talking to... Hey. Hey. Let's go ahead and save that. And there, now we have our friend Hey in our address book. Oh, man. We'll never forget him now. Oh, this is exciting. All right, let's see what's on our calendar. What do we got here for South by Week? All right. Uh... Looking pretty good here in April of 1997. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Go to the uh, Backstreet Boys round in 97. No, go to the Fiona Apple concert. 
on. Let's see what's happening in the 66th month of the year 6666. It's invalid. Aww. I guess Fiona Apple isn't playing in town. Mm. This is the most unbelievably complex thing I've ever done for stream. I feel like I have five arms right now. Oh my god, he's got so much... Duh, Danny's doing so much at, at the same time And right now, now I'm going to do multiplication. This is bullshit! You're just showing off now! This is mathematics right here. <laughs> that seems accurate. Well, let's go back to the cube. So it has a, cal it has a calculator, it has a, an address book, and soon I'll show you the email. It also keeps track of your high scores in an individual app. Here you can see my I got my high score of 1,500 points in Batman and Robin. Pretty cool. And wouldn't you know it, this thing actually has a built-in game. It has Solitaire built in. Now some people might tell you, I'm sold. This is, this is all I need. Solitaire and a PDA and a calendar. This is amazing. I like that it's a tiger. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's see if I can stack some stuff. Oh, God. Okay. Um, I don't know how this solitaire works. Um, I want to put the jack on the queen. What? Anyway, that's solitaire. Uh, somehow it's scored? I'd like to see how this is scored. Well, you're at negative 52 right now, so... So we've explored the many features available to new Tiger Gamecom owners. Let's see what the games are like. We're starting up with an adaptation of the year's most popular movie, Batman and Robin, directed by Joel Schumacher. Ooh. A true classic of cinema, if there ever was one. Oh, fancy. Did it have, like, a putting in the cart? Uh-huh. It has an animation, and I didn't mention this, but the thing itself has two cartridge slots, which is amazing. Hmm, this kind of sounds like shit, Danny. I don't know what you're talking about. You liking this music? It's very minimalist. So the music is pretty much, uh, you know those old Java cell phones? That's what it sounds like to me. It just, does! Just a single tone playing. Uh, no multiple channels, just this one tone. And the thing is, you either get this music or digitized sound effects. So if there's ever a need for a digitized sound effect to play, it'll halt the music and play that instead. <laughs> Let me demonstrate. So the whole thing's in black and white. It's fairly detailed for what it is, but the screen is pretty low resolution. Who should we be? Uh, what the, what is that? In the, who is that? I don't know. That must what, be, uh... What is that? I think that's Azrael. Let's pick him. Uh, uh, yes! You get to pick your weapons. So it's somewhat similar to the Batman Forever game released on consoles before this. And let's play the game. Okay, we've got uh, some info from Cass here about this game. Uh, the acclaimed published takes on Batman Forever have a pretty well-established reputation of, for being some of the worst Batman software to ever exist. This Gamecom take on the most reviled film should probably take the crown, though. Some decently detailed graphic work is hardly enough to distract from one of the most monotonous beat-em-ups ever developed. Oh, so yes enjoy. it is. Yeah, in some ways this is better than the Batman Forever game. In some ways it is much, much worse. I like the tiger graffiti back there, like telling kids to, to graffiti the uh, the name of your favorite console. <laughs> Nintendo sucks, tiger, tiger rules. Do you think there were some people who like in, in, in the, like, oh, I like the Game Gear, oh, I like the Game Boy, someone's like, oh, I like my tiger handheld electronics. Yeah, no one talked to that kid. <laughs> that kid. Now, this one... Out of all the games I've played, it is most unfortunate this one does not properly emulate the sound because every time you get hit in this game, it stops the music, and no matter if you're Batman or Robin, the sound effect that plays is a dude going, oh! It does not play that correctly in this version, and that makes me very sad. Uh, you're going to need a real Gamecom to get that experience. At okay. some point, I did have an actual Gamecom, so I can confirm this is not exactly 100% accurate. So we're talking about other uh, Danny, Sovia Bear, and Electric Boogaloo are mentioning this, but Sovia Bear confirms that there was someone out there who owned a Supervision and liked it more than the Game Boy and the Game Gear. Wow. I mean, 
I... That's pretty incredible, but it's still more likely than someone liking a Gamecom. The supervision had actual games. <laughs> Granted, these games aren't by Sachin, which you may see as uh, an improvement. But then again, look at this. I guess it's playable? You get multiple weapons? <laughs> but, but the question is, why would you want to play it? It is extremely simple. Should mention the uh, the actual screen on the thing. If you were playing an actual Gamecom, you wouldn't be able to see anything because it blurs constantly. If you thought the original Game Boy was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet, brother. The Game Boy, the Gamecom, you cannot see anything if there's motion on the screen. Yeah, it's really, really bad. It's watching it on an emulator is probably the best way to go. Yeah, in some, in most ways, an emulator is definitely the preferable way to experience this console. So, if you didn't quite grasp what was going on in the screen, uh, I was stuck on this little street scene until I beat up a certain number of thugs and then it says go. You can't just go to the right, you have to beat up a certain number of thugs before it'll let you go. So when Cass called this monotonous, they were right on the money. Yeah. What's that thing in the background? I love it! <laughs> A uh, weird mutant turtle stick its head out of a butthole? <laughs> Batman, I think we got more problems than these thugs. Maybe it's Wednesday. <laughs> well, I'm just telling it like it is. Prove me wrong. I'll be waiting. Oh, also, should, uh, do you want me to read uh, Cass's intro to the system? Because it's really interesting. Oh, yeah, why not? Okay, since uh, Danny's going to play for a bit, uh, he's going to play, play probably this game for like an hour, two hours. Uh, let me just read this here. Uh, so Cass writes, 300,000 units sold over the course of a miserable three-year run. That's not bad, actually. That's the sad statistic we have to contend with when looking back on Tiger's Game Kong. For reference, Nintendo had managed to move something like 54 million Game Boys by the time Tiger had decided to stray from the dedicated handheld market and into the turbulent realm of cartridge handhelds. Yeah, this is 97 they decided to jump in. Like, way after the Game Gear and Lynx died, they decided this is when we're going to take on Nintendo. 20 games and two hardware revisions later, it would be new owners Hasbro Inc. who finally pulled the plug on this failed little project in order to refocus Tiger's efforts on their line of Furby animatronic toy products. A lateral move, if you ask me. Bless you, Furby. Bless you. Hey, I beat the first level. Oh, and you that, go into a sewer! That, your favorite! That's yes. amazing! Yes, this was after the R Zone. Yes. Um, uh-huh. So, uh, let's see. Cast continues. With its 12 by 10 grid touchscreen laid across a 200 by 160 pixel display outputting in four glorious levels of grayscale, the Gamecom was no attempt at trying to outpower its portable peers of the era. With a focus on hip features such as a half-baked PDA functionality and internet connectivity, it, was almost, it almost feels as if Tiger were trying to market their device to businessmen on the go. Honestly though, if they had just learned, leaned into more games along the lines of Lights Out and Henry, catering to puzzle and quiz fans, parents looking for potentially enriching games for their children, they probably could have managed to do something with this otherwise doomed console line. But alas, that was not the strategy they went with. I don't know I what's wrong with this game. This looks great. Go on. <laughs> nice butts. See, they opted instead for a series of commercials where they called their consumers slackers and morons. And I do have that commercial in the... Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah, it's in the uh, in, uh, in, uh, intermission. Robin is visiting the butt museum. What is with those asses? Man, I'm, I'm, I finished the first stage. Wow. Oh, great. That's the most I've ever played of a Gamecom game, and I had the system at one point. Hint, if you're thinking of buying this, don't. It is don't. not worth it. It is 100% not worth it. I can confirm this, having previously owned a Gamecom and around half the library. I also owned an R-Zone. Ask me about that sometime. Cast. Hmm? Oh, go on. Oh, Cast continues. Uh, the bulk of games you'll play for the handheld were created in-house at Tiger, with licenses from other publishers and developers being granted on a seemingly hands-off basis. With only a pitiful pair of third-party releases, Centipede and Frogger, you can quickly get a feel for what I described as the Tiger trademarks across the rest of the first-party releases. Repeated use of a small library of audio samples, poor distinctions between foreground and background elements, and a general lack of understanding of concepts such as level design and momentum. Why, why did the game end? Uh, I didn't see what happened there. Continue. <laughs> 
You continue, actually. I don't want to. <laughs> okay, we'll pick up another game. Though. That was abrupt. There was no death animation. I don't know what killed me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's Batman and Robin for Gamecom. Ah, uh, Jason the Janitor, one hit kill. I, uh, yeah, we entered the World War II exhibit, and then something murdered us, and that was it for Robin. So, there you go, a Tiger Gamecom original. That is a game built from the ground up for the Tiger Gamecom. But not all games were like that. In fact, there were several that were ported from other systems. And I think we're just gonna... We're not even gonna make you wait. We're gonna get to the heavy hitters right now. Let's play some Sonic Jam. Yep, Sonic Jam, released on the Sega Saturn. We played that before. It's a compilation of Sonic's Genesis adventures. And here they ported it to the Gamecom. Anyway, Cass ends us all with saying, yeah, it's all rough as guts, but there's also an unmistakable charm and earnestness to all of it. Rough as guts is a good way to put mm -hmm. it, yeah. So, who likes Sonic? I do. Do you want to play this? Are you kidding G me? Give me your phone and I'll read uh, Cass's write-up. Okay, let me, let me get to where Sonic is on this. Well, you can find it. Okay. You know how to use a phone, right? Uh, yeah. I'm, okay. I, I'm afraid to touch anything or else I'll... Okay. <laughs> Sonic, you're looking a little, uh... Looking a little like I drew you there. <laughs> <laughs> How do you... It's one of the buttons. I'll figure it out. There it goes. So you can pick between Sonic and Knuckles, <laughs> Sonic 2, or Sonic 3. They're all in here. Uh, don't ask where the original went. Sonic and Knuckles! I'm gonna play my favorite, Sonic 2. I can be Knuckles in Sonic 2! Nice! I wanna be Knuckles. Now as it turns out, Bad Game All of Fame actually has an article all about this game up on their website, so I'm going to find and link to that. Well, Alex gets used to the controls of this game. What the f- what? Hey, this music! Yeah, it's just like, uh, just like on Genesis. Can't go up a hill! Okay, hold on. Here's a, here's a link to the relevant article that should tell you jump, everything. Jump up! God's sake, Knuckles! My, my dude, my man, a friend. Cass says, I only went and wrote an article dedicated to this disaster piece of a conversion some time back as well, covering all the deceitful marketing and the failed attempt to bring Sonic 3D Blast to the Gamecom, which ultimately led way to this. Yeah, check that out. We almost had Sonic 3D Blast on Gamecom, and instead, uh, well... Well, I will say Sonic. one thing. His, his Knuckles Run animation, it looks nice. Yeah. What the fuck is this, Danny? Here's the classic invincibility music. You remember it. Hey, hey, Danny, once again. Okay, we're actually getting requests to turn up the volume, so why don't you do that? Oh, God. Oh, okay. no, wait, I can do that. Okay, is that better? That should... That should be good. I don't want it to be too loud because sometimes there's going to be digitized sound effects and they'll just completely <laughs> obliterate you. Chat just said, don't do it. Sorry, we did it. We have to. If I suffer, you do too. Hey, you beat a level. I forget, is this Sonic 2 or 3? Ah! Whoa. It's 2. N Knuckles. Alright, Emerald Hill Zone, Act 2. He's kind of sluggish, isn't he? I want you to try something, Alex. Okay. Uh, why don't you show us Knuckles' trademark glide? You mean die? Yeah, it's Knuckles' trademark die. That's what I said. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be doing it. Yeah. That's because Knuckles doesn't glide in this one. He's just a slower, fatter, stupider Sonic. <laughs> he has nothing to set him apart from the pack. <laughs> You save Flicky. Please go up the hill! Don't! Having fun? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Alex reduced to just a set of guttural noises. No, 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 no! <laughs> yeah, the momentum is real weird in this game. I will say you do have a spin dash. Um, I do? Does it work? No. You can try it, though. <laughs> <laughs> What 
what the fuck was that? Yeah, you only push the button once to spin dash, and if you push it again, it automatically lets loose. But <laughs> but it doesn't seem to give you enough momentum, is the thing. Let's try this. There you go, you got this. Oh, now you don't. I give up. Video games are, are dead. <laughs> uh, I've canceled them. Uh, I, I've canceled them both in the in the literal sense and in the online sense. Video games are canceled. If I see you liking or enjoying a video game, get off my feed. Um, you will be blocked probably. You don't stop. Oh, no, Knuckles, the cool. Fuck was that? Knuckles was moonwalking. Knuckles, you should know it's not cool to do that anymore. Danny, God damn. Knuckles is behind the times. Oh, Danny, please. I can't look at chat, please. No, no! <laughs> <laughs> Good work, Alex. You definitely you def you. you definitely showed off what this game was like. Thank you. Oh, uh, here's your sucks. phone back. Oh, thank you. I don't know why you need that phone when we have a Gamecom. Uh, let's check out Sonic 3. So, as Cass mentioned in chat, Tails is in here, and believe it or not, Tails can fly. Oh, so, so he can do a thing, but not Knuckles, yeah. huh? Tails can fly, but Knuckles cannot glide. Knuckles this, is just worthless. This is some anti-Knuckles bullshit, and I do not love it. It is. It's, prop it's propaganda it. is what it is. So, oh, yeah, this plays nothing like a Sonic game would. It plays bad. It's really disconcerting how, how they stick to the bottom of the screen, you notice? Like they're rubbing up against the bottom part of the, the console. It doesn't feel right. This game was funded by the Tails Lobby. <laughs> this is not better than Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> when I think of Sonic Adventure 2, I feel a strong tightness in my chest even thinking about it, but I would much rather feel that... that yeah, I'd rather feel that way. than whatever this makes me feel. Do you see that canned animation, the, the rings bouncing away? That means you couldn't even get any of them. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Also the classic Angel Island Zone music playing in the background. Who can forget? He could fly for a long time, too. Oh. Dead. <sighs> this game is bad. So based on what you've seen so far, folks, uh, what would you pay for a Tiger Game Com? <laughs> If the answer is twenty dollars, hey, good news, that's what it costs on eBay. That's what I paid for it like ten years back when I actually bought one, and that's what it costs now because there has been no increase in price. No one wants this thing. Got some cursed knowledge from chat for you, Danny. This uh -huh. is a mascot platformer. Oh no, it is. We do have to have a game calm night. What's worse than this though? Is Darkwing Duck worse than this? I guess that's what we aim to find out. Couldn't get a single ring. And I still have one more Sonic game to check out after this. Well, there's one of these on eBay, and it is 80 bucks. Holy cow, maybe it has gone up in price. Uh, invest today. Oh, a bonus stage, cool! Do it, do it! Check it out. Get Black Spheres, it said. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh, have you ever become seasick? Because I am seasick watching this. Uh, oh my god. All right, chart then. a course for the seven seas oh. of sickness. Sonic Jam. Now, some people complained about the quality of the ports in the Saturn version. They said it was kind of weird that the music got CD audio instead of being, you know, synth-based. It had inaccurate sound emulation. Some occasional glitchiness, but you know what? I think it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, there's no... They should have at least had this soundtrack as an option, though. This one? Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh god, a loop. I did it! Hey! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I kind of like how shitty this music is. It really does remind me of old mobile phones. It's, it's Fascinating. This sounds like one of those like ringtone ads from 2003 where yeah. like, they'd be like, hey. Like you'd open up your flip phone to play a game of uh, X versus Sever <laughs> and it would it sound exactly <laughs> like this. They should have this song in Sonic Generations. You're right, Blab. It's 
part of Sonic's heritage. Yes, this is total jamster music. Yes, that's what it is. This oh. is... This I'm is like you can download the Sonic music and maybe like the worst version of the Crazy Frog thing, and yeah. Okay, you're seeing a lot of flickering and slow frame rate right now. Folks, the stream is running at a smooth 60 frames per second, I promise you. <laughs> yes, we have There have no been drop no drop frames. frames. This is 100% all frames that you're seeing right here. Oh, Tails, you didn't do that correctly. Let's try that again. Come on, buddy, I know you got it. Quit running backwards up the loop. Thanks. <laughs> okay, let's do this. <laughs> Tails. Tails! Oh, I know. That's thinking right there. Nice. That's using the old noodle. <coughs> Can you believe this shit? <laughs> Alex is dying. I am. <clears throat> so am I. Oh boy. Oh boy. What's what? T Tails, were you yawning? He is he yawning. He is yawning at the end of the world. Yawn so pedestrian. Yay! I did it. <laughs> Yay! The world's over. <laughs> Pretty epic. Oh no. Oh no. Do 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 do. This sucks, Danny. I don't know what you're talking about. This is amazing. This is Sonic as you've never seen him before. Ah, Tails. Tails. So how does it feel to play this, Danny? Bad. It feels like you only have input control once every couple seconds. Otherwise, the game just kind of takes over and does what it wants. I can say for a matter of fact that this is worse than Somari. Absolutely. Oh, without a doubt. Somari, Som Somari runs loops around that this game. Worse than Jurassic Boy, too. Yeah. I. Oh, man. I do prefer Jurassic Boy. Way to go, Chin. You finally have a Sonic game that you're better than. Can I get to the end of this level? That's my challenge, I think. Oop. Do you think do you think they're gonna do you think this is gonna feature prominently in the Sonic movie, this music? <laughs> I hope so. Sonic and is gonna be like <laughs> They introduce that horrible looking Sonic and it just goes doop boop doop boop 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 boop. They're gonna he's gonna punch fucking Dr. Robotnik in the nose and it's gonna be like boop 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 boop. Oh, that's a shortcut right there. Nice. For all you speedrunners, take note. Are you wanna switch games after this? No. Okay, you don't want to play any more games? You just want to cancel the stream? Yeah, just just this one. This is all we need. Where'd the rest of the loop go? <laughs> That's fine. We don't need the whole loop. You only need half to get you there. I do at least want to show off Sonic and Knuckles, so you okay. can see just how superior that one is. Um... You're right, that was Elon Musk's Hyperloop Magmaram. Tell you what, since I have to actually unload and reload this ROM and it's a huge pain in the ass, let's come back to Sonic and Knuckles in the second half of the show. <laughs> Tails! Yes. Tails found a way to get killed standing still. I'm done here. Uh... Apparently you're not supposed to be at this part of the stage and you're accessing broken, unfinished stage parts. Oh, good! <laughs> well, so it's, yeah, let's... It's, it's good that they allowed Tails in there. I'm glad they thought that through. Sonic Jam for Gamecom. Check it out, it's pretty good. So they had more games, unfortunately, that were ported over from other consoles. Maybe the most famous one, and one that's actually relevant to current events, Resident Evil 2. Now this game was recently remade, ported to PS4. Uh, it looks beautiful, people say it plays pretty good. But have you played this one? That's my question. I'm wondering if I should be cruel and make Alex play this. Screw it, why not? I'm getting my comeuppance for every bad thing I've ever done. So. Oh yeah, you deserve this. This is my penance for literally everything. Alright, check this out. Two. I like how he says two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you may have heard of this incident in Raccoon City. Uh, they got zombies. It's kind of a big mix-up. Umbrella Corp, you know the story. Anyway, Stars is here. Oh, good. And it's up to Leon S. Kennedy on his first day at work. It's my first day, he says to every zombie that approaches. It's got the whole story. Mm-hmm. 
but Umbrella is still experimenting. Okay, Alex, start the game, and I want to see you get past the first screen. There you go. Oh, he's just he's just nibbling on your ear. It asked, "Will you use it?" and then it de unequipped it. That's awesome. Um. 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 Can I knife? Do I, oh, do I have to use the fucking? <laughs> okay, there. Now it equipped it. Okay. And you're ready to fight the zombie. What do you think? I sure did. Yep. No, give me another chance. You really want to try this again? Okay. One more chance, and then I'll hand it over to you. Okay. According to Cass's README file, it says, Now this one is proper wild. RE2 on the GameCom goes through the absolutely unexpected effort of what? reproducing most of the original game's screens and puzzles in admittedly clunky and sometimes confusingly laid out 2D lane-based fashion. Of course, this comes at the cost of any and all cutscenes and story beats, and only provides you with Leon Scott Kennedy to wander around the RCPD as. I swear that one day I'll actually play this whole thing through and properly document it. Cass, I want to see that. I want to see just how. Him. I want to see how much of this game they they ported. Oh, you got him off you. Yes, limp away, Leon. No. How do I attack? Uh. <laughs> well, I'll never find out. Guess what, Danny? It's your turn. You go. Good work, Alex. Uh, I can always count on Alex to give the every man's opinion of a game. Yeah, if you play this for the first time, that's exactly what's going to happen to you. It gives you no prompts, no warning. It's just like, hey, asshole, play this game. Oh, you're dead. Should have been faster. Now you have to very quickly turn to the zombie, hit the ready gun button, which is different on this controller since I remapped it. Oh, no. Ah, you are dead. Yes, I am. I am so very dead. Crunch, crunch. <laughs> yeah, you have to be ready right away, because that zombie will get right on you. Yeah, you have to turn, hit the ready weapon button, and then fire into the zombie and hope he doesn't get you. Let's see how many tries this takes me. There we go. Oh no. Oh my god! Yeah, to push him off you have to hit the ready weapon button. I did it! Ugh. Okay, yeah, there's one dedicated button to readying your weapon. You don't have to hold it or anything. Uh, there's another button that shoots. There's a button for inventory. And I think the fourth button runs. Yes. So this isn't true 3D. It has a set number of sprites that it loads in depending on what lane you're in. Uh, here you can see a third lane down here at the bottom. That's when you're at the closest. Here's the second lane. And you can go to the top lane. And most of the screens are laid out like this. Uh. Which which kind of presents an illusion of a 3D environment, but kind of not. Uh, what were you saying? I was going to say, chat's congratulating you on uh, not dying on the first screen. Yeah, I've done the impossible. <laughs> Alright, zombie, come get me. I'm ready for you. So those who have played the PS4 version, uh, how does this stack up? Better? Worse? You know... I think it's pretty much the same. I, I think... I think it, you know... I think this is actually pretty comparable. This is like leading into the gun shop, right? I'm trying to mentally piece this together in the actual game. Oh, check it out. It simulates the doors and everything. Ooh, there's a shotgun down there. Chad... Yeah, you uh, it does say rad on your uh, on your shirt instead of RPD. <laughs> Leon is rad. Don't shoot me, I'm nice. Look at that sprite. That looks pretty cool. I will say the close-up character sprites do look pretty cool, but that totally says rad. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! It just puts you right next to the freaking zombie. <laughs> you are too busy showing off how cool you look. No, 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 no! Get off! Get the fuck off! Shh. 
Sheesh. Sheesh, I say. And it keeps that mechanic of you going really slow whenever you're injured, so that's just extra great. Step by step, inch by inch. Well, I'm already in danger, but that's a good thing because you start with no health aid spray. <laughs> let's uh, let's equip the shotgun and hope for the best. All right, good luck, Danny. What awaits us out here? Uh, more bullshit, it looks like. I <laughs> love the way you walk. <laughs> wow, feel the power of the shotgun. I think you have to catch your breath because, God, this is so exciting. This game is pretty draining. Alright, now we're making progress now that we got the shotgun. Hang on, Grandpa Leon has to shamble across the screen. Who's the real zombie? Makes you think. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he looks. Li I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm so sorry, but he looked like the Virgin Chad meme there when he was walking. <laughs> he did. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. See. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, he totally does. Old no chin Leon. Now, believe it or not, I got stuck here earlier. You have to. You have to enter this door to proceed. This is a door, by That's the way. A Yes, exactly. The version of Leon versus the Chad Claire. <laughs> oh, let's play some b-ball with the zombies. You guys up for some hoops? We go play hoop? Hang on. I, uh, my ankle's just not feeling very good. <laughs> the version PS4 versus the Chad game. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is good. I love y'all. I'm out of ammo. Shit. Um... Uh, is that ammo down there? Okay, there you go. It's for the handgun, though. Uh, I have to be very quick when I exit this screen. There we go. Right, get your own ball. <laughs> Just putting the gun right in his mouth. I mean, what, whatever works, you know? Okay, this is now the furthest I've ever gotten in this game. I've never gotten past this point. Last time I played, I died right below the hoop. What's next for us? Can you believe this exists? This is real. I didn't make this up. I didn't program this game myself as a joke. Uh, Trial Law Radio Network, it controls like tank controls in a three-lane game. Yeah, which... they, keep the cap they keep the tank controls, even though it doesn't really make a lot of sense for the controls they got going. And you still have to manually aim, because they didn't put in an auto-aim feature. Which, you know, you would think that was kind of necessary, but what do I know? And that's Resident Evil 2 on the GameCom. Now, one of the few things they didn't adapt, aside from the cutscenes, the voices, uh, color, they didn't include a save system. Oh! Huh. So you gotta get through that on one credit. I don't know, maybe the title screen had a continue option, but I've never seen an ink ribbon or any way to save the game. Ooh. So good luck to anyone who wants You're to wrong. play through this. Am You're I wrong? wrong? You are wrong. Ah! There are typewriters. Okay, good. I'm glad. That's one concession they made. Thank Christ. Oh, look, there is a load game option. Okay, so if you have infinite patience and infinite time, you can make your way through this game, supposedly. So we've covered the heavy hitters. Let's go ahead and just play through the rest of the library in alphabetical order, I think. We'll do that for the rest of the first half and then continuing into the second half. Sweet. Our next game will be Centipede. Ooh. Why don't you read us that, uh, that blurb there while I load this up? Sure. Uh, Cass says, one of the th two third-party developments for the GameCom, though this still amounts to a downgraded conversion of the arcade standard, still very much playable, though, moves at a decent clip despite providing only the most rudimentary one-bit graphics. Wow, I'm looking forward to this, then. Uh-oh. <laughs> hmm. It gave me an error. Okay, it's given me an error with this. We may have to skip this. Yeah, sorry, Centipede. You uh, were too good for this world. Shame. That was one of the final releases, and supposedly it's pretty okay. Can't all be winners, and I didn't test out every game. But I did test out this one. Next up, we have Duke Nukem 3D. <sighs> all right, let's see what Cass says about Duke Nukem 3D. Those alien bastards are gonna pay for chewing up my gum. <laughs> Great base movement with A, B, and C used to fire your weapon in either of the three directions. 
D will change weapons and also open doors when pressed in conjunction with holding forward, trying to walk uh, okay. into them. So you've seen Resident Evil 2 on this thing, but how does Duke compare? Probably pretty well. It's probably a pretty smooth first-person shooter, 60 FPS, mm -hmm. 3D movement. Sounds great, probably. There's even an attempt at the theme. Listen to that. <laughs> it's so farty! I like that all the games have the same sound effects, too. It has the same kind of wet blorp noise. Yeah, Cass mentioned in the intro, but yeah, it, they rely on a very, very small sound library, it feels like. Pretty cool. Oh, it's got all the episodes. Wow. Toss out your DOS Duke Nukem 3D. This is the this is the superior version. You ready for voice clips? Yeah. Here we go. That the second time those alien bastards shot. <laughs> Doom. It sounds like a bad, like a dream, <laughs> like the Dreamcast of Smash Bad. Yeah. Richard Scarry's Duke Nukem 3D. <laughs> so, from what I can tell of what I played this earlier, you don't, <laughs> you don't move in 3D. You just kind of slide left and right, and that's really weird. Something has killed Alex. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> okay, there's a shoot button, there's a change weapon button. Oh yeah, you can you can use the foot if you want. Uh, let's stay with the pistol. Oh, you can shoot in different directions. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So so to uh, to get around the fact that you can't actually turn within a 3D space, they just have you shoot left and right. Also, the draw distance is really short. I think we can go in here. I think I have to select the foot, actually. Eh. Eh. D will change the thing that changes weapons opens doors. It says. Okay. So you have to hold forward and try to walk in. And then, yeah, you got. I got you. Slowly, this is making sense. So all you Duke fans, bet you're jealous right now, huh? Let's see, uh, Chad says he's voiced by John St. Yon. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Ugh. Damn, this daylight savings really fucked me up. It actually did fuck me <laughs> It did, yeah, it fucked me up too, that's why we didn't have a stream on Monday. So what do you do when you have dudes behind you? I guess just outrun them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Give me cola. Can you cook? Yes. Okay, can't go through there. How about through here? There you go. Okay. Yeah, let's let's kick him. That's gonna work. <laughs> oh, it worked. Cool. This is not the Duke I remember. This isn't even the Duke from the Sega Genesis, th that version made by Tech Toy. I would prefer that to this. This is a... Oh, wow! Did you see that? Yes. That happened automatically. Okay, I'm gonna push up right now. That's what happens when you push up. You automatically turn to go around corners, and that's what happened when you push down. Yeah, wow, that's, that's a really interesting way of implementing a 3D world, Gamecom. This is... Also, you accidentally end up changing your weapon all the time because of the buttons. Why is there so many freaking enemies? You'd think well... with all the graphical downgrades they'd try to, you know, take it easy on you, but... <laughs> oh my god. Did you hear that? Yes! <sighs> it's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, mood. Duke's giving us a crank phone call. Oh, it's a it's a it's a bubbler, a water fountain. Did you know they call it a bubbler in some places here in the states? What? Where? I'm never going there. Probably the north. Ugh, disgusting. Yeah, I know. Bubblers, get out. <laughs> it's the northeast. Okay. In Minnesota. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I guess when you get cold, you just start calling things whatever you want. Oh, we're in the movie theater. Look. See? Look at all these seats. Oh, this is a this is an interesting way to make this look 3D. <laughs> you know what? That's powerful tortoise. That's why I've always that's why I've always said that Pittsburgh is officially like it's not technically like I, I don't count it as part of the North for some reason. I don't know. I just think of Pittsburgh and I'm like, I did it. Yo, shit! You did good. I beat the level. I will not continue this Pittsburgh conversation, but I appreciate Pittsburgh. <laughs> and now we're sending Duke to death row to pay for his crimes. Oh my god. What was that one really bad Duke Nukem that LGR played? Was that the Gizmondo version? Ooh, maybe. It's, that might be worse than this one, but probably not. I'm just trying to think of anything that would be comparable to this, and really no other first-person shooter I can think of tries to turn the first-person part into into that. <laughs> into the whole automatically navigating corners and stuff. <laughs> also, his voice is killing me. Damn, I need a cough I just, drop. I, I can't get over it. Looks like it's a night cool night for me. There was, there was no reason for him to say that. He just said that out of nowhere at random. Just doom. Damn indeed. Uh, let's see. Scarf is missed as Duke's batteries are dying. Uh... <laughs> Want some bird seed? Damn, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> How is this game still here? I don't know. I don't know either, but... We have shown you the big heavy hitters for the system, the ports, the the games that most people played. Uh, if any Gamecom games people spent time with, it's these that we showed off. <laughs>